of our summits. I love her gap method. I, I, I love her personality. I love her ability to look at stocks. Um, she's ready to go. Melissa, how are you doing today? Good afternoon. Can you hear me? I can. Yeah, there you are. Let me go ahead and make you the presenter. Okay. And I'll make sure I can hear you. So we're going to talk about gaps today, right? We're going to talk about gaps. Let me know if you can see a picture of New York. I, slide. I can see a picture of New York and I can see shorting stocks for profits. Did you take that picture yourself, Melissa? I did not, but you know what? It's funny. I used to live in Midtown. This is a Midtown view. I got to get a picture of Central Park now, <laughs> but I did oh. not take this picture. But I, I need to put one of the pictures I took of Central Park because I moved since since I've been using this. But this is a great picture in New York, though. Classic. Cool. All right. Well, I can see you. I can hear you. Um, it, I'm going to get out of your way. It's your turn. Great. Thanks so much for having me, Jeff. Good to be here, everyone. Uh, it is a rainy day here in Manhattan, and I am here to talk to you. Market is officially closed for the day to start out what? I anticipate to be a very volatile week. Why do I say that? Because we had a big sell off in the market on Friday and the Fed meets on Wednesday. So something is going to happen. Nobody knows for sure what the Fed's going to say. And if the Fed decides to raise rates, the market could drop or it could rally. The Fed could decide to pause raising rates. And again, we don't know the market reaction to that as well. So it's going to be a really, really interesting week because the market tried to hold on today after we sold off Friday. And one of the things that I like about trading and specifically that I like about trading gaps is you get a lot of volatility. And again, I expect that we will see that this week. We could even see that prior to uh, the Fed meeting on Wednesday. We could see some volatility tomorrow. We could fall off a cliff tomorrow. We could rally. Volatility is not necessarily a downward move. Volatility is something that happens unexpectedly. That being said, I do prefer to short. So today we're going to talk about shorting. We're going to talk about gaps. If you have any questions, you can plop it in the room. We're going to talk about shorting stocks for profits using the Golden Gap system, which is the system that I created. And I talk about and teach in a class once a month. This is me. If you've seen me, I appear on TV on pretty much every channel out there. Mostly I talk about the market and sometimes I talk about the economy. And again, this week we're talking about interest rates. But if you've been trying to trade or attempting to trade or if you've been wanting to trade, trading is actually a great job. So I started trading in 2008 and one of the reasons that trading is a good job is you can do it from home, but also you have unlimited potential for income versus if you have a regular job with a set salary. So when I started trading, I was doing mortgages. And one of the things that I liked a lot about trading the market was that I had the potential to earn a lot of money like I was earning doing mortgages, except for the fact that it had to do with how good I was. And so I very, very quickly learned that it's about size and then it's also about accuracy in order to make money trading. What do I mean by accuracy? I mean accuracy in the pick making the pick, getting the direction right, and obviously getting the right specific stock pick or direction in the market that you can trade it. So again, trading is a great job because you can get in and out of trades fast and you can also make a lot of money and work from home, which a lot of people want to do. Some people are already working from home since COVID, but not everyone. Now, when you trade, you have one goal, one goal, and that is to make money. So if you've been trading and if you are trading for 2023 and you're not making money, then probably you don't have a good strategy or system to apply each and every single day in order to make money. Because if you're losing for the whole year, we're nine months into 2023, you probably don't have a good trading system. So we're going to talk today, like I said, about my gap trading system, but you have to have a good system in order to make money. If you don't have a system at all, that's another reason why you may be losing because you need a system that you can apply to any pick that you make, any trade that you take, any choice that you make in the market. You have to be able to say, I'm taking this trade because, and then again, it should follow the system that you use. But ultimately you need a system to make money. And then that system has to have a high win ratio in order to be profitable as well. It does not mean that every trade that you take is going to be a winning trade. 
I wish that every trade that I took was a winning trade. That's not the case. Um, but I do take more winners than losers. So for me, if I happen to take a trade and I lose, I've been doing this for long enough, like I said, going on 15 years, that I know that the next trade then that I take has a high probability of working. So again, it's about the odds. You're looking at the odds. You need to put the odds in your favor. If you can put the odds in your favor, then you will make money. If you can have more winners and losers, then you will make money. And of course, also, you want to have some really, really big winners too. This is the stats so far. Actually, I didn't even put September because I took some time off around Labor Day. But this is through the end of August. So this is the first eight months of the year with an average risk of $2,800 per trade. These are day trades on margin. These are not options trades. 407 417,937, and again, this is only through the end of August. I will update this uh, for 2023 going into the end of this week for September. But so far this year, we have had a good year, and almost all of these trades I called in the live trading room were shorts. So again, I do prefer to short, and we're going to talk about shorting today. So far year to date, again, this doesn't have the last two weeks of options in it either, Year to date, for options, I'm risking more money. This is a newsletter. I will show you some of the newsletters. We're at 936,895 for the year. And again, this does not include the last few weeks of trades. So we're over a million so far this year. This is a higher risk. One of the reasons that I risk more money in my options trades is because I want to hold trades overnight and take larger size overnight. Many people ask me about options. You can take one contract. You could risk $100. You can risk $500. The amount of money that you risk in each trade, it doesn't matter if it's an option or a day trade, has to, you have to look at the amount of cash that you have and all your trade risks have to be equal or close to equal. Again, this trade set up quickly. This is not an exact science, but you can take, and what I found that many people do, which is incorrect, They'll take 500 shares, 500 shares, 500 shares. That's wrong. A different entry, the, the difference between the entry and the stop might be $1.30 on something and maybe 50 cents on something else. So therefore, if you took 500 shares of both those trades, you wouldn't have the same cash risk. And in that case, for example, if you had one trade that lost and one trade that won, you would have upside down results. So your cash risk per trade, and it doesn't matter if you do day trades, options, or even swing trades, should should be consistent, okay? And again, that's close to it. So if you're trying to risk $1,000 in a trade and you risk 925, that's okay. If the whole idea is if you're risking $1,000 on average a trade, you shouldn't be risking 200 on the trade. Do you follow what I'm saying? Because inevitably, the one that you risk less on, if you do that, if you chop up your sizing, will be the one that works, and the one you risk too much will be the one that loses. And you want to have consistent results. And it's about the percentage, okay? It's a percentage of win ratio that you're trying to look at. And that's how you can grow an account. And that's how you can move ahead. And again, as I'm looking here on the side, any questions that anybody has, you can plop them in the room. But trading requires a positive attitude. What do I mean by that? I mean, you can't get down on yourself. I've been teaching people now since I started the sock swish business. It was 2012. And again, I'm in business now for 11 years. I've taught all kinds of people, all kinds of ages, all across the planet, actually. And many people that are new that have never traded before and some people that have traded, you know, older than I am. And some people who have never been successful and they want to be successful and they get down on themselves when they're not successful and they feel frustrated with the market. You can't get mad at the market if you're not doing well. The market doesn't have any feelings at all. The market doesn't love you or hate you. It's just there, okay? So you have to understand that there's so many people who want to trade and so many people who want to make money in the market. It's kind of the uh, survival of the fittest mentality. The people that are at the top are the people that are going to win, the people that want it, the people that are willing to make sacrifices to do what is necessary to get there. And you have to understand that nobody wakes up, you know, and is born all knowing how to trade or takes their first class and then all of a sudden trades. That's very unusual. You may come to me. You may take my class. You may have a learning curve. But that's what I'm here to help you answer your questions, understand what to do. And then, of course, I run a live trading room every day. And in that trading room, I'm there to answer questions for you if you have questions and need explanations after the class. But you've got to have a positive attitude. And I encourage people to do that because what you don't want to do is work against yourself. It's very easy to go negative. 
if you have a bad day or a bad week or even a bad year. But if you really want to do this, if this is something that you really want to do and you've been trying to do it for a while and you really want to become a successful trader, I'm here to tell you, you can do it and I can help you do it. And again, my class is on one weekend, but it may take you time after the class to go through the process and learn. That's okay. If you take the baby steps to do it, go through train. And again, the idea is to basically, I don't want to say copy my trades, but take my trades at the same time as I'm taking them because I'm calling them live in the room. That should help you to be able to move forward in order to make money while you're learning. But in order to become successful, you need a system and you need a niche. For me, it's shorting. And really, it's the fast trades. It's the quick trades. And it's really getting in and out quick. And then also, like I said, it's playing the volatility, playing the big moves, which of course you want. Anyways, you can make money in the market. People do it all the time. However, not everyone does. Why? Like I said, there's always one winner for every loser. There's always somebody on the opposite side of your train. You know, there are people that went long the market today. And depending on where you got in and where you got out, you may have made money. Okay. I did not go long the market today. Okay, in fact, I wouldn't be shocked at all if we fall off a cliff tomorrow. But long story short, there's always somebody on the opposite side of a trade. So you're not really creating anything when you trade. It's not like you're going into a, uh, like a factory and you're knitting sweaters and selling them in the open market. You're not making anything with you trade. It's the smartest person gets the profits. The smartest person gets the money. Okay, the one who gets it right. The one who gets in the trade before the move happens in the right direction. And ultimately, you need a good system to succeed. And then you have to follow it daily, every single solitary day. So that's where, that's where it really helps me having my rating system. Because I don't get all caught up in what people are saying on TV, what the Fed is saying. I will look at the market reaction. I will be reading the price action in the charts, in the gaps, to read what's happening Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, before the Fed and after the Fed to make my determination, trying to predict what Jerome Powell is going to do Wednesday or what he's going to do after September, you know, in the December meeting or anything else, no one knows. And again, a lot of pundits on TV, people I even appear on television with, they all have their thoughts, they all have their opinions, but at the end of the day, nobody really knows what he's going to say. But even if you'd say, yeah, he's going to say X, Y, Z, it doesn't mean the market's going to react the way you think. We've seen bad data and the market's rallied. Why? Because they thought that the Fed's going to lower rates then. I disagree with that. But we've also seen good data. I mean, uh, uh, good data and then the market fall. And they said, well, that doesn't make any sense. That's crazy. How does that, how's that happening? And again, because they're, they're saying, oh, well, then the Fed's going to continue to raise rates. And, and that doesn't make any sense either when you think about it. And it also doesn't even make any sense when you look at some of the good economic data because you say, oh, really? We were having good economic data when inflation is still sky high? You can't even trust the reports 100% because they're so skewed. And they look at, they look at some things and not others. So again, price action, reading the chart, reading the chart in live time. I look at the one minute chart. We're gonna look at some daily charts today. I follow the daily. That's what you can rely on. That's what you know. That's the truth. Whatever you see the market close out today at 4 o'clock Eastern time, boom. We can all pull it up and agree on that 100%. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. There's no interpretation. We say, uh, the market closed at this. And then you make the decisions based on that. But for me, I'm looking at a gap. At one focus, if you come and learn from me, it's gaps. And more importantly, it is really shorting because I like the fast moves and shorts. And, and what do I mean? I mean also volatility. Now, let's take a look at Oracle. This is one of the ones we did in the last week. This was a short. Oracle actually had earnings. Now, this is a one minute. And I just want to show you here what happened. It fell. We shorted it. And again, here's the drop. Here's the sell-off. You could have held it even more. Okay, this is on September 12th. But anyways, look at how it fell. Look at how it sold off. Look at how it just continued lower. So if you would have wanted to play Oracle, this was again last week. It was on Tuesday. The only way to make money in this was to have shorted it. Okay, and it did move fast and it did move quick. And it did move big. And a stock like this, I'd say a dollar plus is a good move, is a good trade. 
Now, let's take a look at the SPY here. Again, let's just talk about what is a gap. A gap is the difference between the close and the open. Simple. So the stock market closed today at 4 o'clock, and it will open tomorrow at 9.30 at a new price, a different price. It could gap up. It could gap down. It could be neutral. That's rare. But the market can be neutral. So any place or point of the closing price at 4 from that point to the next day is considered a gap. Again, there are bearish gaps. There are bullish gaps. There's a bunch of gaps we traded and played here in the last few weeks. Now, this is a SPY. Okay, this is a daily. Just want to show you this here. Market closed here at 4 o'clock. Gap down. Gap down here at 9.30. And again, we fell. Boom. And then we gap down again here. So this was the beginning of September. So you could have played this. You could have shorted the market here as a day trade. You could have bought puts, got in, got out. You could have bought puts, got in, got out here. Why? Market was down here. Market opened lower here. This was a gap down. And again, that was the first week in September after the Labor Day. And again, any questions here, let me know. Here was the Oracle. Okay, this, was, this is the daily chart. We were looking at the one minute. Up in here, you can see where Oracle closed. 4 o'clock Eastern time. Then it had earnings after hours at night. Then boom. Open in the morning. So it was up here. I, I don't remember the exact price this closed. 126 and change, something like that. It opened here, though, around 112-ish. Fell. This is the short play. And again, I called a put. So a put is an option, which is basically a short. You're basically shorting the stock. It was a cheaper way to get in than to take a trade on margin as a day trade. Okay. And again, any questions, you can plop it in the room as we go along. But for everything I'm doing, I'm looking for momentum. Oracle's a great example. SPY was a great example. They were shorts and they went quick and fast. And again, Oracle is a great example of that. You could have got in and out of the day trade quick. You could have got in and out of the put quick. You could have got it in the put and out of the put in the same day. And I'm doing weekly puts, okay? Everything expires on a Friday, like we did some trades today. The trades that I called today expire this week on Friday so I'm that's a short time frame actually to do an option in my opinion and when we're doing the day trades we're in now five minutes ten minutes three minutes 15 minutes those are fast trades but everything I'm looking to do I'm looking to play the gap but again I want momentum and the gap is giving me momentum when I see it when I see it, my expectation is that it's going to do like an oracle move, for example. And then, of course, the benefit of trading momentum is what? The faster you get the trade, the bigger you get the trade, the more money you can make. You just plop on the size. For example, if you have 1,000 shares of a stock and you short it and it drops a dollar, if you short something to $20 and it drops down to $19, and you have 1,000 shares, what will you make? $1,000. So again, same thing if you got a move of 10 cents, but you'd only make what, 100 bucks. Would you rather make $1,000 or $100? I'd rather make 1,000. So again, it's the whole idea that momentum is, means a big move. Of course, for that, you need what? You need volume two. Okay, you need volume. We're only trading stocks with volume. I'm not doing penny stocks or cheap stocks. But getting back to what I'm saying, the key to day trading stocks successfully is using a system using a system that sets up daily has predictability in the direction of the move and works independently in the market and does not need the market to work because that can be a bugaboo this market has been back and forth back and forth back and forth at different points throughout the last several months this summer the market overall this year started out the year in january and i was surprised very bullish we rallied this year we're but we're up for the year in the market when I say the market, I'm talking about the SPY, the QQQs, or even the diamonds you could look at, which is the ETF for the Dow. But either way, the market is bullish. We are in an uptrend. Does it hold? No one knows. Okay, just like no one knows what's going to happen with the Fed. We have three and a half more months left in the year. Anything could happen. The market may not hold between now and the end of the year, or it might, but we could still have a bearish fall where the market's selling off. And we may not break the low for the year, or we might. Okay, the one thing that's beautiful about selling, what I like about shorting is that short moves happen big and fast and out of nowhere, and panic comes in when they do. And again, that's, what, that's why shorting gives me such a niche. Most day traders, and I'm making a blanket statement here, but most retail traders, most day traders, most swing traders prefer to go long. I don't know why that's true, but it is. 
The only explanation I can have for that <laughs> is because the idea of going long makes more sense to people, buying low and selling high. Also, there are some types of accounts that people don't have set up correctly to short, so therefore they cannot short. They cannot short. They don't have the ability to short in their account. They can only go long. And then also people tend to want stocks to move higher. And again, they can grasp those concepts. And people want to buy into companies like Apple and other companies to Microsoft, whatever it happens to be that they believe in, that they love. And they want to go long the stocks. And again, this could be as something like a swing trade, for example, or a call, which is an option, but it is basically like going long in the position. But if you learn how to short, I'm telling you, you can have a niche. And again, that's important because anything that you can do to give you a leg up so that you can get ahead of the next guy is going to help you succeed, is going to help you make more money, and is going to help you be successful in the market, which obviously you want to do. So success or failure has everything to do with the quality of your system. So for me, I developed a system that involves 26 points. It's a 26-point rating system. I'm looking for 20 points or more. If I get 20 points or more, I feel like it has enough points where I will short it in the direction of the gap and a gap down, okay? So, for example, Oracle, again, was a good gap. It rated per my system more than 20 points. So we shorted it, okay? And again, you could do a put, which is a short, or you could have done a day trade in it as well. But my niche is shorting moves for the fast speed, in and out. And again, if I'm in and out of a trade in five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes in the morning between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time, I don't have to worry about the market. I don't have to worry about the Fed. I don't have to worry about data that comes out at 10 o'clock or 2 o'clock or anything that may screw up my trades, you know? <laughs> and that's the other thing. If you don't know how to read the market, you could be struggling now. If you need the market for your trades, you could be struggling now. Again, Friday's a good example of that. Today's a good example of that. You know, we rallied today, but we pretty much went nowhere. And we opened lower this morning. We actually got down in the market this morning, pushed back a little bit, and sidelined all day. Went nowhere. Today, we had real, really no momentum in the market. In fact, today, I would say the market showed its hand of weakness once again. But for me, it's the shorting. It's the shorting. That's my niche. Okay, that's what I'm looking at. We did this BA... We did, we've done this a couple of times in here, but this close to your gap down fell. This was the end of August. Again, you could have done this as a day trade. You could have done this as a put. We're talking about momentum. You can see this is a big fat red bar on the daily chart, on the daily here, here okay? And again, I'm only doing stocks like BA is Boeing. You know the company. You've heard of the company. You, you know, if you're, you're going to get filled in the trade. You're going to get in. You're going to get out. But again, whether you do it as a day trade or whether you do it as an option has to do with the type of account you have. But the system, the method, the strategy is the same no matter what type of trade, no matter how I enter the trade. But for me, it's the shorting part of it. And again, if you're trading, you really need a niche. If you want to be like everyone else out there, your results are going to be like everyone else. And I hate to tell you, but most people that trade the market lose. There's many reasons for that. Some people just don't have good discipline in their trades. Some people don't get out. Jeff was talking about earlier, he was talking about people getting greedy with piggy targets, you know, and, and some people have other issues. But ultimately, even if you were a piggy in a, most of your trades, you would still make money in the market e if you had a good system, quite frankly. And if you had a good system, you would get some trades to piggy targets. So booking money is part of it. Not everything is going to go to the dream target, but you will have some trades that do. And if you want to have outstanding results, then you need to be different with what you're doing to get yourself out of the cream of the crop where people are, you know, doing whatever they're doing. Like today is a good example. They're buying the dip. I would not be doing that. We did not do that. To me, that was, that was not a good idea to do whatsoever at all today. And I know people did it. I know people did it. So, and when I say people, I mean retail traders. So my method is based on reading institutional money that moves stocks and gaps. Not all gaps are made with institutional money, though. This is one reason why people often are confused when they're reading the gap direction. But it's not confusing if you have a method to review it and read it and rate it and use it every single day. So here's another one we did. This is Apple. Again, Apple <laughs> has been trying to break for a while now. And by break, I mean fall lower than it's been. 
Stock closed here, gap down, rallied, fell. Again, this was a nice move for Apple. Hit up here, broke under 185, fell off a cliff, broke 180, came all the way down, finally broke 175. This was this was July. The stock had earnings, and then it fell into the August weeks. Pushed back, fell again, got the drop here, fell once again down in here, broke 175. I didn't see where this closed today. Apple was up today on good news. Apple rallied today, which is one of the reasons the QQQs were green. And the overall market was green a little bit today. But anyways, we shorted this. We did shorts in this. And again, this has been actually a really nice short. So how do you make money shorting? You make money shorting when the stock price drops. Again, like that Apple or Oracle. Who can short? Anyone can short. As long as you have an account set up to short. And if you don't have a margin account, then you can buy a put. You can buy a put, you can set up a cash account as an options account, and buying a put is basically a short. So retail traders and professional traders both can short. Hedge funds can short, okay? So again, if you don't know how to short, it's something that you need to learn how to do. You need to know how to short in a bullish market or a bearish market. But what if we go into a bearish market? What if the market turns? I don't know if any of you have traded in 2022, the market fell in 2022 multiple opportunities to short in 2022 and if you didn't know how to short and you didn't take advantage of it you didn't have a good year if you were going long every single drop buying every dip in 2022 we could have another year like that in 2024 who knows again the fall this year could be bearish but selling happens quick it happens fast usually done early in the morning quick 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 now, we're going to talk about, um, this was, again, before I took off for Labor Day vacation. This is one week of day trades. These are day trades that we did. I get up in the morning. I rate the gap. I use my system. If I don't find any gaps to trade, I won't trade. This was for one week with an average risk of $2,800 per trade. Using These are all trades on margin. We're going to go over every trade we did this week. It was the end of August. Monday, there were no trades. Tuesday. We had a good one, 39.65 profit. Again, I'm trying to turn over my money once, okay? Wednesday, 3,200. Thursday, 2,550. And Friday, 2,250. Total for this week was 11,965. So we started out 821. There was no good gaps. Nothing met my criteria. We didn't trade. Then on the second day, the 22nd was DKS. So we shorted it, 115.95. This is a trade on margin. You could have bought a put. Risk was 33.15. Again, 1,300 shares is what I did, but, and then we exited 112.90. Profit was 39.65. Here was the gap. So let's take a look at it. Again, this is a daily chart. Stock close here, gap down. Again, stock closed up here around in the 140s, mid 140s, gap down here in the morning and opened well under 120. Fell off a cliff. I had a fast exit in this. I like to get in and out quick, but I could have held this all the way down. I could have made more. Came all the way down. You see where it went. Came down to 110 and change. So I could have made at least another $3 out of this. But I got in and out fast. So this was a really nice move. A very bearish move. A really solid sell-off on the 22nd. And this was a day trade. I called this trade live in the room. So again, one of the benefits of doing my classes, you're eligible to join the live trading room where I call the trades live. I call the entry stop. And the exit. And again, the size that you take is based on you yourself, whatever you decide to do. If you want to do a, you know, a small size, you can do a smaller size. If you want to take 100 shares, you can. If you want to take bigger size than I'm taking, that's up to you as well. Then on the 23rd, we did Foot Locker. This was another good one. Again, here is the gap. Stock closed here, gap down. Stock closed up here around 23 and change. Open in the morning here, above 16, fell off a planet. We got in, got out, done. Boom. Entry was 1525, exit was 1485, profit was 3200. Again, this was a very, 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 very fast move, but it went and we didn't. And we got in, got out. Again, I prefer I prefer the fast trades, but that was a day trade. That was on Tuesday, and we were in and out, or Wednesday, I'm sorry, and we were in and out of that one. Then the 25th, we did Marvell. Uh, this was, 
I know this was Friday. This was Friday. This was Thursday. I know I skipped this one. Oops. The LTR was Thursday. A24. Uh, we shorted this here at 129.90, exited at 128.80, and I could have held this longer too. I could have had this down. Profit was 25.50. Again, I'm risking an average of $2,800 per trade. I'm trying to turn it over once, but I could have held this. Stock close here, gap down, fell, boom. Closed the night before up here above 140, over to the morning here, or right around slightly above 130, fell, fell off a cliff. Again, I could have held this more, but I get in and out fast. I like to be done my trades in the first half hour of the day. Ideally, first 5, 10, 15 minutes if I can get in and out of it. But this kept going, and that was a nice one. Then Friday, we did the Marvell. This was the 25th. Stock closed here, gap down, fell. Shorted it, 54.10. Again, a dollar is a good move in a stock like this at a $50, around a $50 uh, price point, and made 22.50. And this is it. This is the daily so i'm entering the trade on the one minute exiting it and but i but i'm looking at the daily when i'm making the rating decision and of course if you do an option you are playing the daily as well um somebody's asking i'm putting the stop in in my day trades establishing my risk you lost me there establishing my risk if i call a trade and i'm just throwing numbers out here so you'd understand if you want to go to my youtube i have some uh videos of the live room on youtube but let's say i said 10 by 50. i don't remember where i put the stop in this marvell was like a month ago now but if i said 10 by 50 that would be what 40 cents in other words a stop would be 54 i'd be entering to 54 10 stop would be 54 50 that would be 40 cents. If you're asking me how you size yourself, in my head, I already know that a thousand shares of 40 cents is $400. So I have that in my brain. If you cannot do math that quickly, then you need to buy a calculator. I do have a calculator. I have a calculator by me all the time if I need it. But you should know, okay, a thousand by for every thousand shares is $400. I don't know if that answers your question. But you can use a calculator and buy a calculator if you want to. Okay. I don't know if that answers your question or not. Anyways, it was a good week. It was a good week. And again, you know, right now, this week, there are some earnings. But on tap this week is really going to be the Fed. And then we will have gaps related to the market moves. We, we play stocks that are related, what I call a bucket of market stocks that we will look at and trade and play. But I'm looking every day at usually different things. You know, it's, it's whatever we happen to be looking at. Like we did Adobe last week. Adobe was earnings. Now let's talk about some options here. This was August 16th. We shorted the SPY. We did a put. So I called in the afternoon. Usually I call the trades in the morning, but I saw this. Anyways, 111 in the afternoon on Wednesday, called the 440 puts. This, is, this was cheap. 330, number of contracts was 25, risk was 8250, sold at 750. Again, I'm turning it over. One is a good amount. More than that's great. Getting good out. Profit was 10,500 with a return on investment 127%. Let's take a look at the chart. This expired on the 25th. Oops, where is the 16th? The 16th is here. So again, here's the drop off. Boom. Get in, get out. Done. Boom. Mm. So here's the sell off. And then the gap down here. Out. Boom. So again, when you're playing a putt, what do you want? You want a big fat red bar or you want to be in the putt and then the putt gaps down and you exit. I don't have this in here because this trade just occurred today, but I will tell you that I called a put in NVIDIA last week. The stock gap down huge this morning, and you would get out. You're up a lot. You get right out into the beginning of the open, and we did that trade. It was a nice trade. So anyways, one of the benefits of doing options is you get to capture those overnight moves, which you do not always get, you know, you know, when you're doing a swing trade, you really essentially have unlimited risk, and that's the problem with doing swing trades. And again, the day trades, I'm in and out in a couple of minutes, but the, 
but the options you have a fixed risk yeah you got to get it within the time but that's the whole point you, get, you only have a certain time anyways in anything you do because even if you did a swing trade you don't need to be down for months and weeks and years before the trade goes and if you do a day trade you only got till four o'clock now here was if you took a smaller risk a risk of 30 13 20 cost was 330 sold at 750 profit 1680 dollars return on investment 127 percent same trade again just smaller risk you take it you get in get the move get out boom done and again it's chunking it out it's chunk it chunk it chunk it chunk it out chunk it chunk it chunk it chunk it you get the trade you get the momentum you get out you take the trade to get the momentum you get out that's the whole point of trading it's not holding something forever and ever and ever and ever but you will have some trades that go really big because you will happen to be in them and you'll be in them and they will go in your direction overnight um how do i determine the direction in the morning i rate the gap using my 26 point rating system that's what i was started talking about earlier that is the system that i teach in the class that's 16 hours long that i teach once a month that's what you'd come if you wanted to learn and take my class that's what you'd pay me for to learn the information in the 16 hour weekend course i'm doing the ratings myself if you come you're going to learn how to do them then you can do them yourself and then if you do them yourself and i'm doing them and then you get in the room and then i call the trades and i call oracle you say yeah i got oracle too i know what i'm doing i get it then i call the trade then you do it um someone's asking someone's asking how do you foresee the gap down i'm not predicting the gap itself if that's what you mean i predict the move that it's going to make after i see the gap whoever asked that question like i can tell you right now if we gap down tomorrow morning we're going to fall so there you go you just got a freebie trade <laughs> i don't know if we do but i'm telling you right now if you get up tomorrow morning and the spy is down we're going to drop Boop. so there you go i don't know if we will open lower in the spy is there a high probability we, we will yes i don't know if we will but if we do it's going to drop so i don't i don't predict the gap i predict what it's going to go after i see the gap where do i see the gap well i can see it in the post market or i can see it in the pre-market i'm sure we're not doing anything in the post market tonight in the market but the pre-market is when you get up in the morning okay and you got to get that data you got to get that information and you got to get it on the charts and that's something you can talk to jeff about you need to be able to have access to post-market data and pre-market data that is where i'm seeing the gap i'm not predicting the gap i'm predicting where the stock's going to go after i see it i see dks gapping down i'm saying this is going to drop i'm not saying it's going to rally because if it had rally we would have lost you follow me there was one we did not do i don't have it in here you can look it up on your own len we looked at len last week len gap down i think it was thursday or friday i only remember now every day runs together for me lately we didn't short it we didn't go long it why it was a gap down it reversed and we didn't do it and we didn't touch it and we didn't touch it at all and that was a gap down and i didn't like it and it didn't work i think it was len anyway short moves happen fast why because of panic panic is fear fear creates selling selling is scary we're getting into halloween hard to believe i like that halloween wars i think is, is on food network tonight just started last monday it's a fun show to watch <laughs> not that i have time to cook and make all the things they do but but you know fear creates panic so playing, going back onto what I was discussing earlier, 2022 was a very panicky year for the market. Then the market recovered in January and then all seemed calm. And if I see one more article on a soft landing, I'm really going to scream because it's really funny. You have all these money managers out there trying to calm people down. It's a soft landing. It's everything's fine. This is going to be the end. Even if he raises rates Wednesday, this will be the end. This is the end of the rate hikes. Doo! Nobody knows. But people say that because obviously people that are managing money that make i don't manage money i trade my own you're going to trade your own you're going to learn from me how to trade your money and what trades to take that's what you're going to learn from me but there are people whose jobs and again these are people i appear on on fox news and other channels with they manage people's money they get paid a percentage if they're wrong then it's a problem and then they can actually lose their clients because <laughs> people can get pissed 
especially very wealthy people or people that have a lot of money. And they say, wait a minute, wait a minute. And in 2022, when the market sold off like a hotcake, money managers were scrambling to calm down their clients and try to keep people patient and everything will come back and it'll be fine and wait till tomorrow. Again, that is not what I do. That, that would be a completely different thing. But I do find it interesting because a lot of the people that I talk to on TV, you know, they're very bullish most of the time, 99% of the time. Most of the money that they take from people, they're going long, they're investing in people's, people's retirement account, and they need, to, they need people just to hang on. They also need people to get the profits for their accounts. Um, do I do the put orders in the pre-market? Uh, no, I usually wait till the open, but you can estimate what you think it's going to be and you can put the order out, but it may not fill. Uh, you can watch it, you can adjust it. Sometimes I do that, but usually 99% of the time I wait and I just buy the put in the open. Um, the Halloween baking shows, yes, they're fun to watch. The baking championship or whatever was the other one. Uh, one of the, one of those is on tonight. I forget what whatever one. Um, how do you handle an overnight option that goes far against you? Well, if I'm in a trade that goes against me overnight, for example, um, then I could be down. But if I still have time left in the trade, then I hold it through. So I don't have a I don't have a kill point in my options. Just so you know, my stop is my risk. So whatever you want to risk, I say play it out. So if I call it a trade today and you're in it and it reverses against you tomorrow, tomorrow's only Tuesday, I say play it out. If it reverses against you and you want to kill it at 50%, that's up to you. I don't do that. So I say, okay, I'm going to risk this much of the trade. That's it. Boom. My stop is my risk. You can't lose any more than that. So something can go big against you, but you're only going to lose what you risk. So if you risk $1,000 in an option, it goes completely against you. The most you could possibly lose is $1,000. And if you got a week left, guess what? That trade could come back. And that has happened. That has happened. So I play things out. Um, so that's that. Okay, how do I find the best shorts daily? I'm looking for the gaps and then I rate them and I make a watch list every morning and go through and I rate them. Now in busy season, which is earnings season, which starts in October. So September, we get two more weeks, barely. I mean, it's the 18th. I can't even believe it. This week's the fall starts. So we got two more weeks basically left in this month. That's it. Less than that. And then October is busy. It's earnings season. So in earnings season, I, I, I might rate 30 things in the morning. In non-earnings season, I might rate eight, seven, five. So it's, it, it depends how busy we are. We're busier in earnings season than we are in not earnings season, but I'll rate as many gaps as I need to. That's my job to find the best pick, and then I prefer to do one pick a day. But it's a 26-point rating system, and again, I'm looking for 20 points or more. But my niche is the golden gap system. It follows large institutional money in the market. Gaps are created with large institutional money. That's what makes a gap in the first place. Okay, the professional gaps that happen to play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and then confirm that the large money will flow with it. The SPY is a great example of this. Again, we had that sell-off after Labor Day, and then we had it again on Friday. We played it. We played it. I said, in an ideal world, we sell off today hard and fall off a cliff and sell off into the close. That's what I said in the room on Friday. I was right. So, you know, there was very low odds that the market was going to rally before Wednesday. And there's even less odds that that's going to happen now. And today was like a nothing rally. Like if you had $10 million, would you buy the market today? If you did, that would be a dumb move, in my opinion. So again, people did it. People did it though. The how you're going to make a lot of money is you got to get on the right side of where institutions are trading. And again, this is one of the reasons. I mean, look at where we could go for the fall. Look at look at what's happening with the banking sector. Look at some of these charts. I mean, some of these leading banks look like crap. You're not going to have the market. And when I say the market, again, I mean the QQQs, the SPY, the Dow. You're not going to have the market make brand new all-time highs without the financials. They're still a mess. They're wrapped up in investing in too many long-term bonds. You know, even if they take a break, those the rates are what they are, unless they start to lower them. 
And that's not going to happen this year. And how do I know? Because Powell said it wasn't going to happen this year. In fact, if you listen to him, he said, I don't remember his last meeting, the meeting before, he said they're probably not going to start lowering rates until 2025. And even though everyone wishes and hopes and prays that he does it sooner than that, if the data keeps hitting out bad, the data would have to be so bad, so egregious, so horrible. We'd have to have a 4.5% unemployment rate or something crazy, and we're not even over 4. We'd have to well tick over 4 for him to even think about lowering rates because inflation's too high. And, and one of the main jobs as a Fed is all, to, not only to keep unemployment rates, unemployment low to keep, to have full or almost full employment, but it's also to... Uh, prevent high inflation, which unfortunately we still have. We still have, I mean, I just, I don't care what these numbers say. It's, it's still too high. I know I'm a consumer. I go to the store. I pay for everything. I don't have an assistant that's going and buying stuff for me. When I write the check, when I ring that credit card through, I know what I'm paying. And I see this, this is ridiculous. And I don't even have kids or a husband. I live by myself. If you're a family of four or five or even more, you're paying double, triple in your grocery bills every single week. It's crazy. So... We may have come down, but barely a whoop. So they're not going to lower rates anytime soon, in my opinion. So the Golden Gap 26-point checklist is a trading system that is based on common sense. Common sense, think about it. Think where we're at. Think about the economy. Think about this idea of shorting. Think about the idea of getting good at shorting, knowing that many people aren't, okay? That you could get on top of that move, get the sell-off in the market, get the sell-off in a video like we got. Shorting gives me a niche. People get scared. They're scared. They love to go long and they love to buy. But think about the concept, the, the mental concept of shorting. Now, what if you have a small account? Can you still short? Yes, because you can buy a put. You can open up an options account and you can buy puts and that is a short. And you can also buy puts in your retirement accounts too. So you can use a system to trade options. A put option is a short, okay? Now, here was a, we did this the same day, actually. I was in this before the SPY. We shorted the QQQs, 360s. We did it was the same week. It was that exact same week. These were cheap, too. 290 for one contract. You could buy one. You could spend $290, and you would have flipped it around. 141% return investment. Profit was 12300 with a risk of 8700 Let's take a look at it. The 360s. So uh, this was the same sell-off. Boom, boom, gap down, doom see again where it is again if you're buying a certain strike and this is falling through the strike and you're through the strike which you can see you were here in this gap down you get out done boom you can wait you can wait a little bit you can watch it see if it keeps going it could have kept going if it doesn't it starts to reverse you're out boom done again your goal is to make a hundred this is more than a hundred you've made your goal if you took four contracts were 11 60 you could have made 16 40 but again you could have taken one this is how you can take a small account and build it up into a larger account. Now, again, one-to-one -one I'm looking for, 50% is good an option. It, it really is, at least until earnings season. But you should expect one-to-one, -one, and that is what I'm looking for in most of the trades that I take. That's what we got. In, we got more than that in the, in the NVIDIA. But again, if you learn my system, we're looking for the 26 points. I'm doing it. You're going to learn this. This is what's the whole weekend of the class. It's an intense class. It's a live class. It's an online class. You must be there. You will ask me questions. I allow you to contact me after the class and ask me questions. You're going to learn the checklist. That tells you what to look for in the price of the stock. It tells you what to read the direction correctly, when to short, or when not to do it. Like I, like I told you, the one we didn't do. I said, no, nah, I don't like this one. But having a positive attitude really helps you, and not only that, getting an education. So listen, trade, so you don't... Trading the stock market is not an essential, like this is not a necessity. You must eat food to live. That is a necessity. You don't have to trade as a necessity to live. <laughs> if you never take another trade again, you will survive, okay? If you don't eat food ever again, you won't survive, all right? Now, if you decide to trade, and this is what you want to do, and you say, I want to do this. No, I don't need to do this, but I want to do this. I love this idea of trading, and I'm going to get this thing, and I'm going to be successful. Then you need education. Then the education is a necessity because you will lose money if you don't know how what you're doing. If You will lose money if you don't have a system. If you don't have a mentor, you're going to really struggle too, and I didn't. And the problem is, you know, 
you don't want to lose. And it's so easy to lose if you don't know what to do. So while trading itself is not a necessity, education is if you are going to trade. Because otherwise you will lose. Um, somebody's asking. Someone's asking. Do you buy puts after the earnings if the stock gaps? It, it depends if the gap rates good. So again, there are gaps for earnings, there are gaps for news, there are gaps for sector gaps. I will do gaps for any reason. It all has to do with the rating, but I will do them for any reason. Earnings could be one reason, but we also do non-earnings gaps. Will your method work as well for gap ups? Bullish gaps, there's a bullish gap class that I teach usually once a year. I have not done that yet so far this year in 2023. I don't even have a date for that yet this year. I do not teach the bullish gap class every month. I teach the bearish gap class every month. So this is a bearish gap class. You will not learn how to rate bullish gaps in this class. You will learn how to short. And this is a bearish gap class. And the bullish class is not the exact same. In other words, you can't flip all of the points, if that's what you're asking me. And I do not have a date for the bullish gap class yet. I will plan it. You can get on my marketing list to see, but this is the class that I teach every month. Anyways, it's about taking calculated risk, not risk for risk's sake when you trade. Okay, so create a plan of action to achieve your financial goals, whatever amount of money that is you want. And again, it has to do with how much you risk. And again, it has to do with the quality of the pick. The pick is the stock pick, is the gap pick. The pick is the most important part. Even if you get a crappy entry and a good pick, you can do it. We actually had a late entry in the video. I, 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 I saw it and I said, oh, crap, I wish we'd done this earlier. I said, but it's still going to go. Let's do it. And we did it. And we did it last week, and I'm glad I did. It was a good trade. But I would have made probably double what I made if I had done it earlier. I just didn't see it. I didn't see it early enough. But, you know, you get a late entry you can still make money if you get a good pick because it's all about the momentum so it measures gaps for rating them in the daily chart to find stocks to trade that have a high probability of directional bias for the entire day a big move on the day which you want early confirmation of the bias of the move between 9 30 and 10 and then precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward target potential because that's what you want to so the Golden Gap System is a 26-point professional gap rating system. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. The checklist tells you what to trade when and in what direction. And the 26-point checklist predicts directional bias in a stock. That's how you're going to make money because you, you can't short something that's rallying and you can't go long something that's falling. You know, the, the direction is imperative. One strategy, though, is all you need to be successful in the market. You do not need a general, overall, broad base view to make money. Tons of people have that, and they fail all the time. Learn how to read institutional money and price patterns in gaps, and you don't need to do anything else. And you could do them as options. You could do swing trades. You could do them as day trades. Because if your reason for doing this is to make money, you will make money. Again, the type of trade you take, the position, whether it is a put or a trade short on margin, it has to do with your choice the size of your account, whether or not you can open up a margin account or not, and how much money you have, and whether or not you feel comfortable. You feel comfortable doing options or day trades. I like both, personally, but you're going to learn the checklist in the class with me. It's a 26-point checklist. Again, it's the meat and potatoes of everything that I do, but I also teach all of my entries in the course, the exits and the targets. The class is at the end of the month. I can't even believe it's almost October. This is crazy. September 30th and October 1st. It's so almost here, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time classes online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. It's a class on how to find, pick, and play professional bearish gaps. The class is $69.99. Everyone pays the same. If you want it, sign up, email me, and I'm doing a fall special that's going on through the 29th. But, of course, if you sign up and you want to get in, you can start trading with us this week. I'm going to give the training room free through the end of this year the options newsletter free through the end of this year, and the market report free through the end of this year with the class by the 29th, so this class for September. So again, you could sign up and get this week's trades. Uh, someone's asking a question. Uh, let me go back. Does your system also fade the bearish gap like the NVIDIA gap? No, you will be going long if you went long NVIDIA today. That would not be a good trade, in my opinion. So, no, we do not do that. The put was 
last week. You could have got out of it this morning. You could still be in the put that I called, however, and you would still be up money, to be honest with you. So say you did the trade um, that I called. I'll tell you exactly when I called it. Let me look it up. It wasn't wasn't in the pre-market though. I'll tell you exactly the time I sent this out. And any other questions while I'm looking this up? Friday. Um, I, we, did, ooh, go ahead. we did have a question, Melissa, from YouTube that I promised to ask. Go ahead. Uh, Rita wanted to know how risk is calculated. You, your risk you should calculate based on the size of your cash account. So for example, you can't if you have a ten thousand dollar and i'm just making just use an example if you have a ten thousand dollar options account first of all if you have a ten thousand dollar options account you should have it set up as a cash account you cannot trade on margin at a retail broker with ten thousand dollars you would have to go to a prop broker you get ten to one margin at a retail broker you would need twenty five thousand minimum and you get four to one margin so if you have ten thousand dollars you can go prop for day trades or you could trade options and then you would take that amount of money and you I would say I would risk no more than five hundred dollars per trade with ten grand, for example. Now if you get good and you're doing well, you could risk a thousand, but you want to be able to be in more than one trade at a time, if that makes any sense. Because otherwise you I mean again, you can't risk two thousand dollars with a ten thousand dollar account and then take five trades, you'd have your whole account at risk. That doesn't make sense. I don't know if it answers that that question. But anyways, we did the four forty five NVIDIA puts, I'm not sure where that stock closed today, but I, it didn't close over 445, so that's still through the strike, even if you're in it. Um, any other questions? That catches us up to uh, YouTube, anyway. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? So if you have questions, email me at melissathestockswoosh.com. If you would like a trial to the trading room for the rest of this week, email me. I can give you a free trial for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It should be an exciting week with the Fed coming out. I appreciate everybody for coming today. Thank you for staying. I know it's getting late, but it's really a great time to trade. And again, it could be a really good time to short for this, for this coming quarter or so know how to short it's important to do it and if you have questions on getting all of that data talk to jeff about that because again you need the charts you need the charts to make decisions everything i do to make decisions is always based on reading the live data because that is something that everybody sees uh one more question here oh, i think i got it any other questions before i let everybody go Thank you. Thanks for having me, Jeff, and have a wonderful evening. All right. Thank you, Melissa. You're, uh, you're, uh, thank you. We really appreciate your coming in.